Hi, this is Rob Graham, the Director of Training at Learning Craft, and today I wanted to help answer a question that really bothered me for a while when I was first starting off in programming, and that is, what the heck is a variable? We hear about variables all the time when we're doing programming, but if you don't have a good understanding of what its overall function is, it can make things a little bit more complicated. So I wanted to help you today, if you are in the same place that I had been in the past, and I imagine many of us have gotten there, is what exactly is a variable? Well, the easiest way to answer this is a variable is really a container that is used to store a value. And I like to think of it pretty much as a something that might be a bucket. And in this case, I can say, hey, I have a container here, and I've named it bucket. And now by declaring this container, it comes into existence. And I say, I have something here called bucket, and I need to figure out what I might put into it. Now, the types of things I can put into my bucket include things like text, names, places, any type of word I want to use, text characters. I can also put numbers into this variable, into this bucket, so that I can use those in certain ways. I can also put Boolean values, things like true and false, or zero and one, or things that ref represent on and off values. Now I can also create completely different variables. I can have multiple variables, and I can say, well, I have a variable here called bucket, and I have another one here called box. And they can each st store some sort of information, which is what I need them for. So, for example, if I had these elements up above, and I had M-I-S-S-I, -S -S and I threw that into bucket, and I had S-S-I-P-P-I, -P -P -I, and I threw that into box, then I could go out and I could create a function that said something to the effect of, hey, what do you get if you take bucket and you add box to it? And in this case, of course, we would get Mississippi. Now, we can also use these variables to control how we manipulate numbers and store them away so that we can create mathematical constructs in the future. So for example, if I put a value of 243 into my variable bucket and a value of 7 into my variable box, I could then go in here and say, hey, what is bucket times box? And this answer would be 2961. So that's a very basic overview of how we would create variables and what we would do with them. Now let me show you in the context of Flash ActionScript how we might go about creating these things. To begin with, I'm going to start by just creating a button that will allow us to do various things. We go in here and I'll just make a round button right there. Okay, so on our stage. Now once again, in order to make this into a button, I need to first select it, go to the Modify menu, convert it to a button symbol, and I'll just uh, call this uh, button 1. Okay, and now I have an object here, and I really don't care what the down and, and hit states for this button are at this time. I'm just going to basically use it as a, as a trigger. And what I want to do is when I click on this, I want something to change. I want to basically be able to store information in a variable and use this button to display it. So to do that, I'm going to create a field right next to the button here. And this field will allow me to basically take the content that's being generated and put it someplace where I can see it happening. Okay, so there it is. Now, a couple things. I'm going to go down here to my properties window, and I'm going to make sure that I have a border on this object so that it shows up like that. That'll work nicely. And uh, we're pretty good to go. Now, I'm going to start by going into the button and just showing you how we can create some different scripts or variable. The first thing I'm going to need to do, of course, is create some sort of criteria so that when our end user clicks on the button, it understands what it's supposed to do in web. Now when we create a variable, basically what we need to do in order to make it come to life is we first need to just declare it. And the way we do this as a local variable is we say, hey, var, var. And what's going to follow this var is the current name of the variable that I want to create. Now, there are very few restrictions when it comes to creating variable names. You can't start with a number, you can't start with a space, and there are a few other characters that you cannot start a variable name with. However, if you stick to your basic uh, alphabet, you should be all set. And oftentimes it's very useful to create a variable name that's more or less based upon something that you can look at and recognize. For example, let's just say I want to call this uh, variable current tally. Okay, that's, I'm going to use this to count something up. I'm going to want to store a, a number of some sort in here. So I'm going to say the current tally is going to be equal to, and let's just say it's going to be equal to the number 5. Okay. So now I have a script that says when someone clicks on the button, I want you to take the value of 5 and put it into this thing called current tally. Now in order to check that, what I can do is I can go and take the content and display it in the field that we created. However, there's one step we need to do before that can happen. 
let's bag out of here for a moment, and let's go back to the field. Now when I create a field, there are a few things I can do. First of all, this particular field I created as a dynamic text field, which means information can be written to this field by the computer. You'll notice down here that there's an instance name. There's also another field down here for variable. Now what are, what are the differences between these two? Well this one is if you wanted to do something to the field itself. If let's say I wanted to animate this field around the stage, then I would refer to it by its instance name. If I want to talk to the content inside the field, then that's where I use the variable name. And it gets a little confusing, so it takes a while to wrap your head around this. But for the most part, if I go in and name this field, then I'll just say answer field or something like that. And now I have answer field. By the way, these variables are case sensitive. So if I haven't used the capital F in one place and I use it here, then I'm going to run into problems and my program won't work. So you have to constantly remember what it is that you've named your variables when you're writing your scripts. Now the reason I want to name this field in the first place, let's go back to our button here, is that if I want the answer to show up in that field, I need to be able to say, oh by the way, take the answer and show it in the field I'm calling answer field. And the way we do this is I'll just say answer field once again, make sure that case sensitivity is, is being tracked, is equal to, and then in this case, I'm going to just say whatever the current variable that we created was. Okay? So simply as saying answer field is equal to current tally, and spelling definitely counts when you're creating variables. And then I'm just going to close this. So what should happen now when I go and run my program is if I click on the button, it will put the number 5 into that field. Let's go test this out. It should be pretty straightforward. And we run the movie. And now if I click here, there it is. There's 5. Now, of course, if I click it again, it just goes and puts the 5 on top of itself and another 5. So there's not a whole bunch of dynamic use for this type of thing, but let's take the baby steps here. Now let's go back into the script. And let's say I want to uh, we'll make this a little bit more complicated. I'm going to say this is going to be, uh, the value of this is going to be 5 times 7. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. Okay, so now instead of putting in 5, it's going to put in whatever the value of 5 times 7. Once again, we go in here, we click, and now it tells us the answer is 35. So it's going to be able to do some mathematics for us and put that information into, in essence, current tally is really just a container. We created a bucket or a box and we, we dump some content into it. I can also go and pull information from other places and work with it that way. Now there's one other thing I want to show you that we can do. Let's say I wanted to create something that every time I clicked on the button, it would take the content that was already in the field, that, that value already in the field, and it would add it to itself. Well, let me show you how that's done. To begin with, let's just say we want to have a counter that every time we click on the button, it adds 2 to the tally. The way we would set this up is we would create a variable. Let's say we'll just use current tally. And we would say that the value of current tally ongoing is going to be worth the value of itself, in this case, plus 2. Let's get rid of that extra stuff. So basically, every time this gets updated, current tally is going to have 2 added to it. Now, in order for this to work, I need to go in and I need to set basically a starting position because if we go and try to run this program right now and we click on the button it says basically number not recognized it doesn't understand what to do with this value so what this means is we need to think about a place where we can put an initial value for this variable that we've created and the way we're going to do that is we're going to put it right up here in our first layer and what I want to do is just select this and then go into the actions for the frame. And what we really want to do is have an initialization frame that when the program starts it says, oh, by the way, here are the values that you need. So what I would say is, okay, well, a variable current tally is now equal to zero. Okay, and that will work out pretty well. So now when the program starts, it has a number that current tally is equal. And now when I go and click on this, it will put in two and then we'll put in 4 and 6 and 8 and so on. And we can entertain ourselves for hours if we're really very ambitious and do it two at a time. Now, of course, the overall value with this type of a construct allows us to go in and take things like scoring mechanisms. If you're creating a game and you need to be able to, every time you shoot a spaceship, it adds five points to your score or something like that, 
this is the construct you would use to get to that point. And by the way, if there's anything those of us at LearningCraft can do to help you out with regard to training in areas of uh, dynamic media such as Flash and Camtasia and PowerPoint, please let us know. We also specialize in online marketing technologies and, uh, and approaches. And we'd be happy to talk to you. You can certainly reach us through our website at www.learningcraft.com. This is Rob Graham. Have fun with your variables, and I'll talk to you real soon.